Eddie applauds, also greeting the defending world champion Stephen Hendry for his simultaneous match with the number nine seed, Steve James. And it's with the world number one we stay. What opposition will he get from... ...he's had since then. Well, that was a nice shot you played there. Six. He's got an easy red into the middle, which I think is the, the correct ball to play. Just come back for the black. So. Well, he's overscrewed that. And the problem is that in potting the black, the black's going to be tied up and not available in either pocket. So he's in potting the black, he's going to have to play for the red closest to the left corner pocket. At least that will give one pocket the black will go in. But he needs to score. Seventy. Just checking to see if the pink will go into the right centre pocket. If it does, it's quite a simple positional shot off this red. Obviously it does go. Eighty. Not certain where the pink will go after it's potted. see where the pink's going because he could do with it in play in a direct line with its own spot and the middle of the top cushion Steve James just waiting to see whether it's possible and I would say it is Yes, it'll help Steve if he can just nudge that red away from the pink that's virtually touching it. Still got one to the left corner. But he would help to referee Bruce Duncan as well if he'd have moved the red and made his job a little easier as well. Queuing. 
The red is hampered already, in actual fact, is available in the right centre. Because it's a delicate little shot, and, well, he'd rather play one where he can get the cue through firm. Problem over. Great chance to win the frame now at this visit. It has to be said. Forty-five. Yes, he's got the angle to drop on the black this time, and uh, maybe a chance to just nudge another red out into the open off the black. Hasn't quite come, perhaps, as far as he would have liked, but uh, he still should knock this in. Well, one into the same pocket, so Steve James has found his touch. 53. Yes, and it's a good performance, this, after losing the first frame as he did. And then not really getting a chance in the second frame and he's took this opportunity very well he's looking for the black and one more red to leave Stephen Henry needing snookers In fact, Steve James did try to hold the spot. And if he has, he will just be able to cue the cue ball to pot this red. Certainly putting the referee's ner nerves on the line here. But doesn't need position off this red. This red will win him the frame. Ooh. Wipes its feet. to relax a little now and try and build a sizable break. Run into a bit of trouble there. I think he may well come down and take the pink. boost this will be for Steve. 76. Very talented player and in winning this frame and doing it in style will give him the confidence to make a real match of it. Ninety nine. One hundred and 
Thank you. Well, certainly this capacity audience have enjoyed this. And I'm sure they enjoyed the first two frames because it's been pretty good snooker so far this afternoon. And one could have excused Steve James for being a, perhaps a little bit down after losing the first frame. It looks as if he had it won, but uh, he's here to win this championship. So that's a great break of 126 by Steve James. Over his account, he trails at two frames to one. Three, four, Steve James. Seven. Stephen can force the reds open off this shot. short of pace it's by no means easy and what a chance for Steve James now a very straight pot to the corner. <coughs> Content to play onto a red to the middle pocket. That's about as bad as it could have finished. This is a nasty shot to have to play. But uh, Steve James now believes he can win this match, and I'm beginning to think Stephen Hendry does as well. run pretty well out of position now he may take a, a red on any pot that he takes on from here is certainly not easy the audience there really enjoying this match This 
there's still plenty of points on the table for Stephen Henry to get back into this frame. So Steve has to be very careful with this shot. Can't pot a red. He's got to play another good safety shot. Attempting to send the black ball to the far end of the table. It almost went in the centre pocket. Oh, that's bad. That's a bad mistake. Stephen Hendry can't bear to look. Sir. Red. 14. Should seal it for him. James has played with the majority and some very good tactical play in the last 22. couple of frames. Steve James. And with a lead of 55, he's surely done enough. Now just look where the cue ball's finished. Thank you, quite please. Yes, Stephen Henry concedes in a magnificent match. He's won by Steve James by 13 frames to 11. I, I felt the pressure all week. You know, it's, it's a different kind of pressure coming as defending champion. And I think you can only explain it, or you only know how it feels if you have been champion. Um, I don't think anyone else knows how it feels. But... Uh, I suppose if I was going to get beat, I'm glad it wasn't in the first round. You know, I've, I've managed to play some good snooker. That's right, it, it's hard to explain, you know, I, I, as I said, you know, it's it's a kind of pressure that I think only the players who have done it can explain. You know, um, and, I did, and I did feel it tonight. A lot of credit must go to Steve, he played very well. You know, it, he was never in front till, till 12, 11, you know, and a lot of players um, would have got frustrated uh, coming back at me and then I was still edging in front all the time but he stuck in there uh, he's a fantastic player but uh, you know obviously a, a lot of the blame is on me as well so I'm having a table in next week after the world championships and I'm, 
I'm going to be dedicated for the first time in my life. It seems to have paid off, and I've only been doing it about two or three weeks. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's not rubbish. I'd, I haven't been practicing. I haven't been enjoying me practicing. But, um, so I've been having this. No, I don't know. No. <laughs> no, I've been concentrating on my snooker room, you see, and it's been doing me head in a bit. And that's probably why my results haven't been so good. I haven't bothered practicing. I've been been shoveling dirt instead from the building because I don't have to deal with him, you see. But uh, I'll get I'll get rid of all the soil, and he knocks the uh, grand off, you see. So that's what I've been doing. And um, and I've got all blisters all over me. And... It's true. I haven't been practicing. I've been I've been. Uh, Painting and varnishing and uh, and burying soil in these skips. That's with a builder, obviously. Is it your friend building? No, he's no, he's not friend. <laughs> <laughs> you can have a look at the building. Oh, all right, right. No, it's all right actually. Yeah. <laughs> Who said all these snooker players are alike? What a contrast. You have to feel, let's be fair for Stephen Hendry, what a great season he's had, and the sadness there apparent for everybody, and the joy of Steve James. What a man he is. Anyway, as I say, we're now into the semi finals, the last four, starting out later on this afternoon. Here's the lineup. Steve Davis will start here today against John Parrott, snooker's new dad, against the lad from Liverpool. And of course, they did meet here a couple of years ago in the final. It was a terrible final for John Parrott. He said, I'm not going to remember that. It's totally different now. And then tonight, the start of Jimmy White versus Steve James. Don't blink, you might miss the whole of the match, the way these two fellas pot, I can tell you. The semi-finals of the best of 31 frames. And incidentally, Steve James gave himself a nice birthday present last night because uh, he, uh, just after midnight, I think he might have been having a half a lager then, he was 30, and incidentally, Jimmy White is today 29. So the birthday boys will be battling out that semi-final here this evening. But as I say, Steve Davis and John Parrott will be the first one. Right, 